when you hear a prophetic word that the work of your hands will take you to kings and their palaces, it is easy to say Amen. But when God says to you that Moi Moi, also known as Bean Cake, will take you to kings and great places, sometimes we struggle to believe his word. Pastor Mrs. Ayodiji Megbokwe is the founder and the CEO of No Leftovers Nigeria Limited, which began with a startup capital of 1,000 Nigerian Naira selling local beans cake, also known as Moi Moi, and has now become a thriving catering outfit. She is a graduate of the Enterprise for Development Center and Manchester Business School. Ayodeji has been recognized as one of the first women worldwide to benefit from a 10,000 women initiative sponsored by Goldman Sachs and now serves as an ambassador for the program. Ayodeji has spoken at numerous local and international platforms, including the annual general meeting of Goldman Sachs in New York, the Clinton Global Initiative in New York, the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland, the White House in Washington, D.C., the Second Global Economic Summit in Istanbul, Turkey, live on BBC in New York, to mention a few. She is committed to spreading the importance of women empowerment and inspiring others to start small and grow big. Ayodeji is also a conference speaker. She is the convener of Grace Ladies International Business Ministries and the president of the Association of Business Women in Commerce and Industry, Nigeria. Ayodeji Mebope was honored as a special invitee to attend the first 2 W20 G20 Conference 2023, which held in Arangabad and Jaipur, respectively, both in India. Ayodeji continues to grow no leftovers and has become a sought-after public speaker both locally and globally. She is a happily married mother of two and proudly shares that she has been mightily helped by God. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Pastor Mrs. Ayodeji Mbebope. As often as I breathe, let my whole life be expressions of your grace. Daily as I live, as often as I breathe, let my whole life be an expression of your grace. Yes, I live as often as I breathe. Let my whole life be an expression of your grace. Daily as I live, daily as I live, as often as I breathe. Let my whole life be an expression of your grace. Be your name. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. We cry. 
cry out of Father, hallowed be your name, hallowed be your name, hallowed be your name. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He has anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. I proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. I proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. I comfort them that mourn. I appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. I give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garments of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that we may all be plantings of the Lord, that Jehovah may be glorified, that we build the old wastes, that we raise up the former desolations, that we repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations, that Gentiles may come to our light and kings to the brightness of our rising that we may lift up our eyes and look and our hearts fear and be enlarged because the abundance of the sea be converted unto us the forces of the Gentiles come to us the multitude of camels cover us the dromedaries of Media and Ephah all they from Sheba come they will bring gold and incense and they will show forth the praises of our God blessed be the Lord that teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight ah Jehovah the lifter of men. We exalt you, we bow before you. Who art man that thou art mindful of him? Or the son of man that thou takest account of him? The Bible says that man, you've made man a bit lower than angels. Jehovah, we bless you. We exalt you. We honor you. We revere your presence this afternoon. Thank you for this house. Thank you for your love towards us. Thank you for your agenda concerning the kingdom that you have called us into. Thank you for making us priests. Thank you for making us kings. Thank you for making us royalty in your house. Thank you for bringing us out of the dung and setting us amongst princes. We bless you, Lord. This is the day you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I commit this few minutes into your hands and I say, God, be glorified. In every one of our lives, oh God, that our whole lives will be expressions of your grace. They will look at our health and they will say, this is grace. They will look at our marriages and say, this is grace. They will look at our businesses and say, this is grace. They will look at everything, our finances, our children, and they will say, this is grace. This is grace. This is grace. There will be nothing in our lives that is anti-grace. Nothing in our lives that is manifesting flesh. But spirit. But spirit. But spirit. Thank you, Father. Take all the glory, all the honor, and all the adoration. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen and amen. You may please be seated. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Blessed afternoon, everybody, and I greet you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Amen. I count it a privilege to be standing before you this afternoon, because who would have thought that Peter could have toiled all night, caught nothing, and Jesus will call him, use his boat, and then turn him from a fisher of, a fisher of fish to a fisher of men. Hallelujah. And that is the story of my life, that God called me brought me out of the miry clay. There I was weeping and struggling and saying, God, how do we eat? How do we drink? And he said to me, he said, beyond all of that, I have a plan for you. And I thank God. Praise the Lord. I want to celebrate the angels of the house. Pastor Mutupe, you know I honor you. I thank God for your life. I thank God for the grace of God that you carry. I thank God for the water that continues to flow, 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 flow. I see you and I always remember Ezekiel 47. Hallelujah. The water that does not stop flowing. God bless you, Mama Grace. God bless you, Pastor Sir. I celebrate you, sir. Thank you so much for being that strength that God raises when he wants to use a vessel. Thank you so much. And for all the men and women of God in the house, I bring greetings. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. I'm not here because I qualify. I'm here because grace picked me. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit is just finding vessels that he can use. He's just looking for vessels. If only we knew how present his presence is 
our struggles will no longer be in the flesh. Our struggles will no longer be to attain because everything we need is in him. Amen. It's present. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is here and he wants to empower us like never before. Amen. I have seen God move in dimensions that I can never ever have dreamt of. I get teary time my profile is read. Sometimes I go through stacks and stacks of documents and pictures in my house and I recall and I recall and I recall and I say God can be trusted. But I want us to know that beyond all that God has done for us, he wants to do more. Yeah. No matter how beautiful your life is today, come on now. God wants to make it more beautiful. And that's why the Bible makes us to know that the path of the righteous is as a shining light that shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. I'm not here to preach. I'm just here to deliver a word that the Lord has given. And he says that the younger ones should pay closer attention because he's looking for vessels he can use. He says that if the older ones are not ready to move, he will raise the young ones. And my prayer is that for everyone that has young ones in their homes, in their families, that you will release these young ones to be used by God. Hallelujah. I have seen God move in the lives of young ones. And I'm so grateful that I'm a testimony of a mother of young ones that God is using like never before. But you know, the use of God in the life of a human being is as the human, beings under, the human being understands that this body must diminish in strength. Hallelujah. Let me start by reading. I'm going to be referring to quite a number of scriptures. And I love the theme scripture for the month. 1 Thessalonians 5, 18 to 19. Verse 19 says, do not quench the spirit. Another translation says, do not stifle the spirit. Another translation that I love so much, that's the first encounter with, that I had with that scripture. Do not frustrate the spirit of God. You know how we frustrate the spirit of God? When we don't allow him flow. When we are constantly mindful of ourselves. Hallelujah. And then we forget that he says that, <laughs> imagine the birds. Imagine all of those things that you just look at. They do not have the image that of the, in which I have created you. And I take care of them. What makes you think that I'm unable to take care of you? Hallelujah. Amen. God is more than able to take care of us. Just like he's really taking care of us back home. Regardless of all the th things that we go through. God is with us. Amen. And I know that God is with you. But you see, beyond what God has done. Is the desire that God sees you begin to hunger and thirst for more. Hallelujah. When you become satisfied, your life becomes like the life of, of Issachar. You know, when Jacob was dying in Genesis 49 and he began to pronounce blessings to the lives of his sons, he spoke concerning Issachar. He said, Issachar is so strong. He looked at Issachar and looked at all the capacity that Issachar carried, all the competencies in Issachar, all the abilities in Issachar, and he acknowledged. His father acknowledged him that this guy is strong, but there's a problem here. What's the problem? Issachar. Issachar is burdened. Hallelujah. Issachar is burdened. But before I go there, let's just first of all see what God is saying about the times that we are in. Praise the Lord. We're going to be looking at the book of Acts. There's no way we can talk about our lives as Christians without talking about the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. And that's why I love, I, I love Psalm 144. Blessed be the Lord my strength, who teacheth my hands to war, my fingers to fight, my goodness, my fortress, my high tower, my deliverer, my shield, and he in whom I trust, who subdues my enemies under me. What is man? You have to ask yourself. What is man that thou art mindful of him? The son of man that thou takest account of him. Man is as to vanity. His days are as a shadow that passeth away. Bow the heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains and they shall smoke. Cast forth lightning and scatter them. Shoot out thine arrows and destroy them. Send your hand from above. Read us and deliver us from great waters, from the hands of strange children, whose mouths speak vanity and whose right hands are right hands of falsehood. And then we will sing a new song unto thee, O Lord. Upon a psaltery and an instrument of ten strings we will sing praises unto you, because it is you that giveth salvation to kings. 
You deliver David, your servant, from the hurtful sword. Read us and deliver us from strange children whose mouths speak vanity and whose right hands are right hands of falsehood. Hallelujah. That our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth. And our daughters as cornerstones polished after the similitude of a palace. That our garners may be full, affording all manner of store. That our sheep may bring forth thousands and ten thousands in their streets. That our oxen may be strong to labor. That there be no breaking in or breaking out. That there be no complaining in our streets. Happy are we, filled with the Spirit. Blessed are we when that is our case. That's when we give the Holy Spirit absolute authority, absolute liberty to move as he wants to move in our lives. God is looking for vessels through whom to express his greatness, through whom to express his love, through whom to express the fact that he's the one that opens and no man can shut, through whom to express the fact that he's the one that lifts and no one can pull down. When God lifts you up, nobody can pull you down. When you have the understanding of that, you stay in the place of prayer because you know that it is in the place of prayer that you were lifted in the first place. Hallelujah. The Bible says, seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all that we are ever, have ever needed will be added. I am a living testimony to that. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 2, Isaiah chapter 2 verse 2 says, and it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow onto it. That's why when I heard the choir minister that song, something leapt in my spirit that yes, this is it. The last days, God is looking for vessels to use. If you look at the book of Acts chapter 10, there we see a man introduced to us. The man Cornelius, he wasn't born again, but he had a pattern. And what God is asking us to start with this morning is what is your pattern? What are your patterns? What are your traditions? What are your customs? What, is, what, what are those habits that you are ready to continue with? Cornelius, let's open our Bibles again. Let's move straight to Cornelius. So I beg your pardon. Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're thanking Jesus in advance for what Jesus has planned to do. For the revelation of what he's about to open you to. For the strength that he's about to give you because you are going out of this place a new person. Amen. Somebody say, I go a new person. Go a new person. Hallelujah. I read from the New Living Translation. In Caesarea, there lived a Roman army officer named Cornelius, who was the captain of the Italian regiment. He was a devout, God-fearing man, as was everyone in his household. I love it. He, he feared God. He feared God and he ensured that everyone in his household had the fear of God. Even though he had not come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. He had not, he had not known what the, who the Holy Spirit was. And that is that I also want to connect what I'm reading to Ezekiel chapter 47. If you're not familiar with that scripture, write it down and when you get home, read it. Hallelujah. It talks about, it talks about, the, about the stream of healing waters. When the angel of God took the servant of God, Ezekiel, and then he began to walk with him. And the water began to flow. And the water began to flow as it continued. Somebody say as it continued. It is as you continue. It is as you continue. Mm -mm. Somebody is asking, but I've been serving God. What's happening? Oh, it is as you continue. Now, the, 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 the length of time you continue before you see the dimension of upgrade. Ah, oh, come on now. Because there are dimensions of upgrade in the spirit. If you want to experience an upgrade in the physical, it starts from the spirit. Because you have to know that life is governed by the spirit. Life is governed by the spirit. Everything you see is governed by a spirit. I spoke to a young, a young lady yesterday, 15-year-old girl. Her mom is my, one of my daughters. Because I spent the night in their house. And she was so upset. This precious young girl was so upset. And I had to call her to my room. Why are you upset? I said, some of them just made me upset. And that's how they make me upset. And I'm so upset. And she went on and on and on. And I said to her, do you know there's a spirit behind every mood? Do you know? I said, once you get into this mood, now tell me. 
For every emotion you exhibit, there is a spirit behind it. And so this emotion you're exp exhibiting, there are two spirits, you know, the spirit of God and the spirit of the devil. Now you tell me, use your mouth to tell me who is controlling you. Who is controlling, who is behind the spirit? Say, but it's not my fault. They made me, I said, you cannot determine how people act, but you can determine how you react. It's within you. Especially as a child of God. You can't go on in life and say, they made me do it. My husband made me do it. The sister made me, No! It shows that you're still a babe in the Lord. The, the time has come that God is looking for matured sons and daughters who are going to be able to stand for him. Listen, we come, we are, we are children of a kingdom. And the, it has come to, it is high time that we stop hiding our identity. I came here with, through an Uber, in an Uber. And the guy was, yeah, we, I engaged him in a conversation because I have decided, I'm a city set on a hill. My identity cannot be hidden. You will know that I'm a child of God. And then we started this conversation. And we started talking about systems. I was excited. Systems and structures. And he began to talk about the Antichrist. He said, you know, the Antichrist has infiltrated into the system. You know, and then he started, talk, started talking about all the gender issues. All the gender issues. And I said to him, where do you stand? Where do you stand? The, the, uh, the devil has set up structures. But before the devil set up stru structures, God was before the devil. And he expects that his, that his children will rise up and not be ashamed. The days of being ashamed of our identity are gone. If you continue to be ashamed of your identity, then you'll be swept with every other person. Because you are a kingdom-minded person person. That's who you should be. And in this kingdom, we have cultures. There is a culture that God expects you to follow in everything that comes your way. There is a culture. There are templates for this kingdom. We serve a king and the way the king wants us to serve him is the way we have to serve him. Amen. We cannot on our own now begin to devise methods. Okay, I'll do it today. Do it. No. He wants us to follow him, but he knows that we are frail. And that's why when Jesus was leaving, John chapter 15, he had an engagement with his disciples. He said, I do not leave you alone. He, did not, he has not left us stranded. No matter how weak you feel, no matter how impossible you think your, your upgrade can be, for as long as you acknowledge the help of the Holy Spirit, he will help you. Somebody say, he will help me. Somebody say, he will help me. Verse 2 of Acts chapter 10 said, he was a devout God-fearing man as was everyone in his household. This is one of the scriptures that helped my husband and I raise our children. Mothers and fathers. This is one of the scriptures that helped them, us raise them. We will wake them up. Mention their names. You are blessed. Wake up. You do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. You do not stand in the way of sinners. And so we have to ask ourselves, what are we speaking into the things that the God has given us responsibility over? It's not even until you have children. Your life is your responsibility to a large extent. Because in our walk with God, you, we don't throw all the responsibility in the hands of God. He has given us abilities and he expects us to use those abilities. He has given us a manual, his word. And so the word that he has given us, he not only gave us his word, he's given us his spirit to help us to navigate this earth so that we can be light unto the world, salt unto the earth. You have to ask yourself, am I propagating the mandate of this kingdom Am I evangelizing what this kingdom is all about? Am I telling anybody anything about the kingdom? Can't you see the agenda of the world? Can't you see how they are throwing it in our faces? You want to sign a form? They're asking you, are you male? Are you female? Or are you other? They're not ashamed. They're not ashamed. And we are ashamed. If you feel that you're, you're not able, just like I felt years ago that I wasn't able, had so many excuses. I excused myself. I said, Lord, you know, I failed so many times in school. My English is not good enough. 
My siblings can do it. You're looking at the next person and you're saying, Sister Doris should be able to do it. And God is saying, it's you. And when God keeps beckoning on you and you don't respond, you are frustrating grace. You're frustrating grace. God forbid. Can you imagine you frustrating God? So you have this capacity. You see how strong you are? You see how strong we are? That we have the capacity to frustrate God? Somebody say, I will not frustrate God. How can you frustrate the one that gives you life? How? How would you delight in frustrating the one that has given you life? This job that you have. That is helping you to pay your bills. That is helping you to, to, to live a better life every day. He's the one that gave you. If you keep frustrating him, what happens moms and dads when your children frustrate you? You bought a car for that child. And the child keeps coming home at 2 a.m. <laughs> frustrates you. What do you do? I will take the keys over. I bought you the car. Do you know what that means? When you frustrate God, the giver of life, ask somebody, say, God, don't take the keys. And when you threaten that child and say, child, I bought this car for you. I'll take the keys. A right-thinking child, what would the right-thinking child do? Begin to come home early. Somebody say, I will begin to come home early. God is calling somebody. He's saying that enough of those excuses. Enough. Verse 3, one afternoon about 3 o'clock he had a vision in which he saw an angel of God coming toward him. Cornelius was a devout man and he continued and then he had a vision. The more you continue with God, the more your sensitivity increases. Do you know how many of us have had angels visit us? We didn't even know. We had no clue. Why? Because we were spiritually insensitive. The Bible says that a child, as long as he remains a child, a, an heir, as long as he remains a child, will never, ever get the inheritance. He differeth nothing from a slave. What's the point? What's the point of coming to Christ? And there's nothing to show in all that we do that we actually have his DNA. Sometimes, you know, there's a lot of drama going on around the world. And sometimes you have men who have heard so many stories about women bringing home pregnancies that are not theirs. And this man begins to now look at his child and say, ah, this child does not have my head. Ah, this child does not have my ear. Ah, God. May God not go and do a DNA test because of you. When he sees that, ah, ah. After all the investment, paying school fees and all of this, he's not looking like me. I laid down my life for him. He doesn't bear my fruit. Those are the ears and the eyes that God is looking out for. We call them the fruits of the spirit. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. When you continue to react to people's actions in a way that is not in line with the word of God, you are not bearing the fruit. He's going to begin to find, consider, is she really one of us? These are the last days. And God is looking for men and women that will stand up and declare for him. Because he's ready to bless us. How do I stand holding a mic? How? Labored for years. Become a Christian. But I was at the, at the edge. I don't... Let me test the water. That was what I was doing. Test the water. Test the water. And then I'll run back. It has nothing to do with title. I was a pastor's wife. And still at the shore. When are you going to come deeper? When you stand at the shore, you will only catch dead fish. When you go deep, oh yeah, you will see what no man has seen. Because God will cause you to catch what no man has caught. 
But it's up to you to determine how far you go with God because he died. Somebody say he died. That's the, that's the greatest gift you can give anybody. He died. What else do you want? You're waiting for a sign? The Bible says an evil generation waits for a sign. What other sign are you waiting for? For you to know that Jesus is Lord and he's able to give you whatever it is you're running around for. He's not a man that he should lie. He's not the son of man that he should repent. Has he said it? He will do it. What is impossible for our God? Nothing. He's just looking for vessels who we can use to showcase his glory. And so are you here? You'll say, but God, I've been following you. Follow him yet still. Because it's a process. Cornelius had served God, but it was a process. And he got to this stage. Why didn't God make Cornelius one of the disciples? Why did God choose Peter, James, John? You don't have a say in who God uses. What you have a say in is how you respond to the call of God upon your life. And that is why sometimes in the church we see so much envy, bitterness, and jealousy because we do not understand that we ourselves are called for a purpose. You are called for a purpose. Run your race. Cornelius was running his race. Listen, God knows how to identify and locate you. He knows why, why of all the people in the whole world has he chosen you? Has he chosen me? Why? I sometimes wonder, why? Why all these women all over the world? You chose me. You searched me. He has searchlights in his hands. And he came. He went all over the world. And he didn't see the doctor. He didn't see the nurse. He didn't see the engineer. He picked this girl who had failed so many times in school. And says, because she has followed me all these years, I want to turn things around for her. It has nothing to do with age. It happened, began to happen for, 17 years ago. I was going to turn 40. Don't put a cap on your life. Who told you that God can still use you? At what age did KFC start? He's still the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. All he wants is for someone to say, Lord, I surrender all. I'm ready. I'm going all the way with Jesus. He uses the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. They may look foolish in the, hands of the, in the eyes of the world, but because the Holy Spirit is there with you, he turns it. Somebody say he's turning it. Amen. Cornelius was serving God faithfully. The Bible says in verse 4, he stared at him in terror. That's why I love Isaiah chapter 60. Lift up your eyes and see. And your heart shall fear and be enlarged. Because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto you. The forces of the Gentiles shall come to you. We have the word. What are you doing with it? It's not what you have. What's the use having money in the bank and not doing anything with the money? What's the use having nice clothes and, wear, and then you, st you, turn up, you turn up wearing old clothes? What's the use of having them in your wardrobe? That's what some of us do with the word. The word is spirit and life. The weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal. No matter what it is you, have, you, are in, you are faced with, God is more interested in your victory even than you. Who is ready? Who is ready? Who is ready? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And you know the story. How God showed him a vision. And then at the same time, showed Peter a vision. Sometimes you read the word of God and you think that it's not happening yet again. Who told you? Who told you? It's time, ladies and gentlemen. It's time, young men and young women. Go out there and see how God is using people. Don't stop at just looking at them on social media and say, ah, be liking. They want, God wants you to be liked. In your own place of assignment. But your pursuit is not to be liked. Your pursuit is to do the will of God. Hallelujah. And you can only do that with the Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon you. You are anointed, empowered. It's in you. But you will never know until you make the first move. I never knew that he would honor me this way. I never knew. I would sit back admiring people celebrating them. And God would tell me, I want to use you too. And I would say, but God, you know I don't have. He said, try me. 
And today I'm amazed. You will be amazed. At your children, you will be amazed. I have two children by the special grace of God. Our son came, went, in, went to the U.S. 10 years ago. At that time, he had failed in school. But God took him to the U.S. And today, he's a man of God. Amen. Our daughter got married last, two, oh, to be two years this year. And then we're looking at her and saying, God, when will you make a way for her? And today, she's thriving. Ladies, we didn't do it by our power. Gentlemen, no. No, we just yielded. We stopped comparing. I stopped comparing myself with anybody. I began to focus on what God has given me. I God opened my eyes. I said, Holy Spirit, open my eyes to what I have. Before I round off, I can see that time has gone. But let's just read, finish reading the scripture. Joel chapter, let's go to Joel chapter 2, and then I'll leave you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Joel chapter 2. Bible says that. Joel chapter 2, and I'm going to be reading verse. Oh, sorry. Let's read Micah first. Micah chapter 4. But in the last days, it shall come to pass. Same, same thing as we read, but I want to point out something to us. But in the last days, it shall come to, come to pass that the mountain of the Lord... Mountain of the house of the Lord shall be exalted in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow into it. And many nations, remember the, choir, the song the choir sang? Many nations shall come and say, come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. How many of us are ready to say, come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord? Please open Joel chapter 2 for me, thank you. How many of us are, say, are ready to say, come, let us go to the mountain of the Lord? To so your colleagues at work to that Uber driver, to that friend, to that person. They come to you. And some of us are finding evangelism very, very tedious. It's no big deal. If that is where your heart is, if that is where your treasure is, you'll find it easy to evangelize. Final scripture, Joel chapter 2. Praise the Lord. God is looking for people who will make him, who will make themselves the billboard of God. Somebody say, I'm God's billboard. Somebody say, like you mean it, I'm God's billboard. Final scripture, Joel chapter 2, verse 28. But it shall come to pass afterward. Somebody say afterward. afterward. It is now. This afterward is now. That I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Praise the Lord. I want to leave you with this. Learn to prophesy. Learn to speak into your life every day. Every day. I have seven multivitamins. Isaiah chapter 60, Isaiah 61, Isaiah 62, Psalm 144, Psalm 90, Psalm 23, every day. Isaiah chapter 54, sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, that that is not travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith God. Enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch forth the curtains of your habitation. Spare not. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. You and your seed shall inherit the Gentiles and you will cause the desolate places to be inhabited. That's what God says. Don't sit on the word. Activate the word to work in your life. The Holy Spirit is there with you. The power to speak it is in you. Let it walk and see what God will do in your life. Shall we rise? See what the Lord has done. Hallelujah. See what the Lord has done. When you do all this, this will be your song. What we've waited for. Has come to pass. See what the Lord has done. See the way He loves me. See the way He cares for me. You carry my matter for your head, oh, in a me like a little baby. You watch over me, oh. You know they use me, they play, oh. In a me, oh, be na
Father, we thank you. If you're here, very quickly, you want to give your life to Christ or you want to rededicate your life to Christ, just lift your hand where you are. Just lift your hand where you are. Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this moment. Thank you for your word. Thank you for these hands that are lifted up. Thank you for these hearts that are open and asking you, Lord, give me another chance. Lord, I pray your grace, your strength. I pray your favor, your mercy in the name of Jesus that you will help them. And Father, for every one of us, Lord, upgrade. We pray upgrade. We know it starts from the Spirit. Help us to be consistent. Help us to have prayed. Amen and amen.